Hello everyone, welcome back to my country farmhouse studio. I'm Marnay and today is going to be a memorable day. Why is it going to be a memorable day? Because today I'm going to show you how to make a memory game for kids um, out of basic scraps that you might have laying around. It doesn't require a lot of fabric and we're even going to make a fun little bag to put them in. I don't have anything to show you at this point because um, I made these bags for Christmas and I made them for um, my sister's granddaughter and my niece's uh, kids for Christmas. And they were an absolute hit. And I also made a game set for the neighbor kids that I made the, the little quilts for. And I've had a few requests and a few of you were interested. So I'm going to go over and how I do this. And it's going to be fast, fun, and easy and a great gift to give to your child, grandchild, uh, niece, nephew, you name it, you know, use your imagination. So anyway, I'm going to take you over here to the cutting table and my new setup. And hopefully I can give you a view of everything that I'm doing. So um, I've got my table here and what you need, I hate my head's cut off. <laughs> what you're going to need um, is some felt or wool. Um, I think this is wool. It was free, it was given to me, but um, the first few game sets that I made, they were made out of felt. So whatever you have, wool or felt would work best in just like a plain form. And then of course, I have a scrap bin over here. I don't know if you can see it, but I save everything. And if y'all are like me, this is my scrap bin and it is filled with different fabrics. And I try to keep them organized in there by, you know, color and because I'm always looking for a certain color of whatever and because I'm a piecer. So what I did is I went through all of my scraps and I found 10 different designs. So, so you're going to want to find, um, let me straighten this a little bit. I feel like I'm off kilter. So um, you're going to find 10 fabrics, 10 fun fabrics, colorful fabrics. They can be plain, they can be themed. Um, it's whatever you put your imagination to. So I've got a few um, fabrics here and I just got in my scrap bin, but I also have another set that I started but I'll get to. So I'm going to show you what I picked and move you down here so you can kind of see. This is my new ironing board. This is not going to be what I want on here, but it works for now. So I hope it doesn't contrast with what I picked out. So I picked out some pink lotus and I have two each. So you're going to need two sets of squares in, in 10 sets. Um, I've got peace signs. I've got shells. I've got butterflies. And there's there's two each, two matching. Two, another set of butterflies and two matching. Two with white, uh, white with red hearts. Two colorful owls. Two sets of music notes. Uh, two sets of buzzy bees. And two sets of cows. Now these uh, squares are going to be cut at three inch square. So these are three inch square. And if you want to get a pen and paper and write down what I'm doing, because um, I don't really have a pattern, I found this idea in a magazine and I think it was really fun and it was a hit and I think it would be great to share it with all of you and you can put your own creativity on this. So these are three inch squares and you need 10 sets. So 10 sets of two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So, um, 10, hopefully you could all see that. So, um, the next thing you need, um, like I said, is felt your felt. This was I, some leftovers that I, uh, was making my previous game with, but you, your felt or your, um, your wool, whatever you have, um, you want to cut this into four inch squares. So I'm going to take you over here to my cutter and I'm just gonna, let's see, which way do I go? Over here. I've got my cutting table here, so hopefully you can see. This is a whole new station for me and um, it's not quite finished. I just got my lights up last night. Um, I was so excited because I really needed uh, a lighting over my, my cutting table here because it's kind of dark because it's in the corner and then I got another light that hangs over my sewing machine. So gets better lighting. You need light to sell. So anyway, I have this and it's already cut to four inches, but what I want to do, and I'm just going to put this on my board here and I'm going to line it up on a line and I'm going to cut these into 
four inch squares and I got my rotary and I'm just gonna trim off the edge to make everything sh straight and four and I have this folded over so I could get two cuts at once for the where I straightened it up I'm just gonna throw that away and now you can see I have two nice four inch um, felt or wool squares and um, so um your next step after you get you're going to need uh, 20 of these uh, felt squares. You need 20. 10 sets of the, you know, whatever you pick for your theme. Um, I think I went over some of the themes that you could do. Um, my sister's uh, granddaughter, I made her a cat theme for Christmas. And I had all kinds of cat fabric. And I just took 10 pieces of fabric and I cut up some little, you know, uh, cat, I made them in hexes. So the last set I made in hexes. We're going to do this in squares because it's keeping it simple. But um, I did 10 sets of cat hexes for her. And one of them, what they were 10 sets, uh, nine of them were cats and one of them was a mouse. And the mouse looked like a princess. My sister Glenda told me that she absolutely loved that game. And she loved all of the pieces because they were all pretty and they were girly and they were kitties and they were just fun. And I made her the matching little kitty bag that she could put all of her pieces in and drawstring it closed. It was an absolute hit. But this one we're going to make square. And um, you're going to have 20 felt squares and you're going to have 20 three inch pieces in 10 sets. <laughs> Keep track of that. Um, and let me see. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a glue stick. Give me one second because it's right over here. Okay. I have a glue stick here and I got this at Hobby Lobby and it's a fabric glue stick. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do before I sew these to keep them in place. And I have all my pieces here and we'll just start with these musical notes. And of course, it's got some fabric on it or strings. So I got my two pieces and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this um, glue stick and I'm just going to kind of make an X in the back side of the fabric. Now why I want this glue stick on here is because I, when I'm getting ready to sew this down I want this to stay in place and I want to center it right in the middle of that square just like that. And that way your fabric is gonna, you know, kind of stick to your felt. And when you go to sew this down, it's not gonna shift and move or whatever. It keeps it from moving. You can pin it if you want. For me, I just thought that this fabric glue stick would be a great um, thing to um, help me position these and it would be faster than pinning. So what I wanna do is do this other one and you just wanna kinda, like I said, a little X is sufficient to, um, make it stay in place on my my felt square and I want to get it kind of positioned nicely. So what we'll do is um we'll take all of our squares we'll glue them onto the backs of your felt squares. So those two are ready to go and the next step I want to do is take this over to my sewing machine and I want to zigzag all around the square. And I like to use a contrasting thread because the thread, um, your thread color is gonna show up on the back side of your, your game piece. And um, I'm gonna grab my other game pieces so I can kind of show you what I've already got started to save time in this video of um, boring you to death <laughs> because this really is simple and you really just need to use your imagination. So I've got, some sets and these are unfinished here but I did a set for um a doggy theme and I'm going to keep this in my farmhouse you know because I have kids that come here and play all the time so let me grab those other pieces over here that I've already sewn and I will show you how I've got some of them started so this one here was the dog bones and you can see I used red thread because I thought red would really show up and I have some red in the bag that I'm going to make and I just zigzagged them around. You don't have to zigzag. You could do a straight stitch real close to the edge and then I would do another double stitch around, you know, beside the first stitch, you know, just to kind of give it some contrast because the backs of them, when you flip these over and you lay them all down, which I'll kind of show you here, if you ever played a memory game when you were a kid, you have all your pieces and you know, I'm gonna mix these up a little bit. Here's one with little dogs, but you're gonna turn these upside down 
Here's another one with a dog face, really cute. You know, and you're just gonna mix up your tiles all around. Um, here's one with puppy love. And we're just gonna mix these around and the uh, bones and hearts and paws. And I'm just gonna kind of mix these up. And then here's another one that has a doggy and it says, I woof you. <laughs> just really fun and cute. And so you can see you're going to turn all your game pieces over when you play the game. You kind of tuck them up. And then the kids all take turns, you know, flipping over the squares to see if they can find a match. And, of course, you don't. So you try and again, and there's a dog, and there's a, you know. So it's just, uh, at Christmas time, uh, at Christmas time, I played this game with the neighbor kids that I made um, the cute little quilts for. And, you know, they had their pillows and blankets that I made them and they sat down and played the game and their dad's girlfriend was there and they had so much fun playing with it. So this is a really great idea. It makes it a awesome gift for birthdays or just, I don't know, special occasions, your grandkids. I mean, the ideas are endless, but this is a really cool thing to have. You can't break them. You really can't hurt them or destroy them or tear them. They're washable. <laughs> so, um, anyway, so the bag. Let me get to the bag. So we, you know how to stitch these down. I can show you on my machine how I zigzagged it around. I used a contrasting thread. So when I get my pieces all sewed down, and here's the rest of them. I've got paws, and let's see. I've got another one that says woof, woof, or rough, or whatever, rough, woof. <laughs> These, these still have to be glued down. And then I've got, uh, let's see, these two are gray and they have like little dogs on them. So these are just little scraps of fabric that I had. And here's one that's really colorful with dog paws. So um, I made a, yeah, I have me some notes here. So what we could do, you could do dogs, cats, bugs. Bugs would be another one. I have a lot of bug fabric, but I don't know if I have 10, 10 different fabrics to do bugs, but that would be really cute for a little boy, you know, for bugs. Um, farm animals. I'm in a farmhouse. Goats, chickens, ducks, uh, cows, uh, llamas, whatever you can, whatever kind of animal you can find on the farm. A mouse, a house mouse, you know, I mean, cats, dogs, um, yeah, so that would be another uh, fun one for a little kid. Colors. If you have just some plain fabrics and like 10 different colors, that would be a great game for color games. You know, if you can find the green or the red or the blue, you know, the ideas are endless. I'm just trying to give you some ideas. So as I said, the felt squares are four inches. The inside squares are three inches. Zigzag them down. Um, use your glue stick to hold them. And let's see, in contrasting thread. Okay, so we're going to get to the bag. You need a bag to store your game pieces in. So my game pieces, my outside of my bag, I like to get a little creative. And you can get a little bit more creative with this if you want. I like to make one side, you know, one fabric. And this is just a little piece of fabric that I picked up at a, at a fabric store. Um, when I go to the fabric stores, I like to get into their, their cutoff bins where they have like little scraps because I love little pieces. So these two fabrics, this is going to be the back side, are just fabrics that I picked up at my local quilt shop, you know, in their scrap bins because I love little pieces because I'm a piecer. But this is going to be the outside of the bag. The inside of the bag, I had some of this um, green and it has these little footprints all over it. And I thought this would be great for the dog game. But um, if you wanted to get crafty or creative and you have an embroidery machine, you could embroider something, you know, like your child's name or something, you know, fun, you know, love grandma or whatever, you know, on your bag, the year. Um, you can applique some things on here. I mean, you could piece it together in little squares. You can, whatever you want for a little bag. I'm just keeping this one simple. Also for your bag, you're gonna need um, some channel strips. And the channel strips are what your ribbon is gonna go in so when you can drawstring it close. I'm not gonna box this bag. This is just a flat little bag and it's so simple. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. So the measurements, for this, these pieces, you're going to need two pieces for the outside. I chose to do two different ones. And these measure 8 inches wide by 10 inches tall. And same way with the liner. You need two pieces for the liner, and they are going to be 8 inches wide, 10 inches tall. 
You can make your bag whatever size you want. I figured this is a good size for my bag. I mean, this isn't a pattern. You don't have to get fussy with it, but to keep it simple, you can go by my directions or you can venture off and do what, you know, whatever size you, you would like. So my ribbon channel, you're gonna need two of these. And these, I've made mine because I'm just gonna slide a piece of ribbon in there. And I made these two and a half inches wide. And I also folded over the end so I didn't have any raw edges. And you can fold this twice. I just folded it once because this is just a simple game bag. And then I double stitched it after I folded it over to kind of just um, give it a nice red decorative stitch because there is red on my bag and red on my game pieces. So you do that on both ends. You fold it over and I just double stitched it. And it's two and a half inches wide. And I made it eight inches long, but by the time you fold it over, you want it a little bit shorter than the width of your bag. My bag was eight inches wide. And maybe I cut these at seven and a half. Maybe, I think they were seven and a half. <laughs> yeah, because my bag is eight. And I don't want I don't want these to be the, as wide as my bag because you need seam allowance. And I don't want to sew these in the seam allowance because I need those channels open on the end to slide my, my ribbon in. Which I didn't get my ribbon out yet, but... Um, I have to show you that. So you need two of these, two and a half inches wide by seven and a half inches long. Fold over the ends, the ends, and I double stitched them. So I'm not gonna show you how to stitch down the squares on the felt. I think that's pretty simple and explanatory. I will show you how I do the bag, and the bag is really, really simple. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put right sides together. And we are going to stitch all the way down the bottom, all the way down each side and across the bottom. And then we're going to set that aside. And then the other part of my bag, before we sew them together, I probably should show you how I'm going to do this. You're going to get your channels on here. And hopefully you can see. So you know what we're going to do with that. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get on my sewing machine and show you how to do this. But on the outside of my bag, and I think this is going to be the right side up, I'm going to take one of my folded channels because after we, you know, sew over the ends, you're going to fold it in half and you're going to press it. And what I want to do is find my middle of my piece of fabric. So I'm going to fold this in half and I'm kind of going to finger press in the middle right there. And that will give me the middle of my fabric. And then the same thing with this piece. I'm going to fold it in half. And I'm going to do a little finger press and you'll get a little line where you finger press and then you can line it right up on the line in your bag where you finger pressed it because it'll leave a little crease right there. So that way I know it, it's right in the middle. And then I can get my pins and I can pin that in place so it doesn't move when I sew it. And let's see, let's grab another one and we're gonna put a pin right into this one and I got that one pinned. So the other side of my bag, the back side of my bag, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to find the middle and I'm just going to rub my fingernail across there so I can, I have a tiny little crease there which I can see. I don't think you can see this on camera but if you do it you'll be able to see it. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my, my channel piece. I got a little crease in there and then I can line up my creases and they're together and then I know I've got my channel right in the middle. So you'll have a little bit over here on each side for your seam allowance and you want to use a quarter inch seam allowance um, so that you don't sew the ends of your channel because we need that to, to be open. So um, get a pin in there. And just so it stays in place. Make sure I get everything aligned here. Everything moves when you sew. So you want to keep everything pretty tacked down. Even this glue might help to <laughs> keep it aligned. But I think I've got with two pins in there that should keep me aligned. So um, I'm going to move you over to the sewing machine. And I'm going to show you how to put this bag together. So let's move you over here. Bear with me. Um, I'm still working out all the bugs in my new area and trying to make everything visible. So I'm going to move this down to the machine and I'm going to show you. So you're going to see, um, 
I'm going to be facing the machine. You're going to see how it comes out. Hopefully you can see um, just how everything goes here. And hopefully I've got good lighting. I think so. All right, so I'm going to start with the liner. And I probably should pin this together because, like I said, everything moves when you sew. And if I had some clips, I could have clipped it. But I think a pin or two will just help help keep it together because I don't I don't want them to move around and um, get uneven when you when you sew. I'm gonna scratch my table so I can be careful. And just a couple of these pins will work to keep everything from shifting when I sew. All right, sew the bag. I'm going to sew down each long, well, I'm going to sew down the long side. When I get to the bottom here, I'm just going to leave my needle down, pivot, sew across the bottom, leave my needle down, pivot, and then go back up the side. Um, I'm not going to leave a hole in this bag because I'll show you the trick to that um, after we get it sewed. So I want to do this at a quarter of an inch. Let me get my foot pedal where I can reach it. My sewing desk is new and I'm still trying to get comfortable with everything. Um, like I said, just got lighting up last night and it is wonderful. So, oh, whoops, I'm in the wrong stitch. I've been in the zigzag stitch. <laughs> whoops. So let's get it in the right stitch. I have my red thread on here and it's still on. Okay. I don't think them zigzags will hurt there at the top. I'm just gonna do a little back stitch and then I'm just gonna zip this down a quarter of an inch. And you wanna keep your seam allowance um, as close as you can. Everything fits together nicely. And like I said, you can box the bottom where you um you cut the corners out and then you can make like a, a flat bottom. Um, I don't normally do that on my bags, but you can. But this is just something to store your game pieces in and to keep it neat. And it makes it look really attractive. And I over sewed just one stitch, so let me just turn that, okay. This is a great idea for leftover fabrics. It doesn't require a lot. I like to use up my scraps. This is a great way to do it. And you're making something useful and fun. I thought I unthreaded myself, but I think I'm safe. Okay. So now I've got this all sewed together. And if you can see the red stitching, um, I just sewed it down the sides across the bottom. And um, this is the inside of our bag. So next part. Um, first off, what I want to do with these channels, I'm going to sew these channels. Um, I'm going to sew them right close to the edge because we're going to, these are going to get sewed in the seam. But right now I just want them to stay in place so I can take my, my pins out. So I am just going to sew these very close to the edge just to hold them where they're at. And then I'll go back in and um, we will finish sewing it. You'll see when we um, finish the bag. I just want them to stay in place. So I'm just going to sew these very close to the edge about, I don't know, an eighth of an inch would be, would be about right. I'm just holding it in place. And I'm not going to sew across my red stitches. I'm just sewing it up to the stitches. And then um, you don't need to back stitch because we're going to, we're going to sew them on again. Oh, guess what? <laughs> I didn't unthread. I ran out of bobbin. All right. This is life. This is what happens. <laughs> Thought I had enough red thread on there. 
Oh, I have a white bobbin here. Uh, bobbin thread's not going to matter because you're not going to see anything decorative. What am I doing here? I'm getting a little out of sorts. Okay. Tweezers. Take me just a second to get re-threaded up. You know, only this stuff can happen while you're filming. <laughs> so, just bear with me. It just takes a second. I love this machine because it's easy. Let's get the top thread out of the way. Okay. Now, we're ready to roll. So, let's try that again. And after I've unpinned everything... Let me get it back in the middle. And I'll just throw a pin in it on the one side and then um, hopefully I can hold it to keep everything in place. Okay, again, I'm gonna sew right close to the edge, about an eighth of an inch. And then I'm going to zip that down. don't need to backstitch. Not right now. So there is one channel on. So what? In, when I get the bag finished, this is going to flip up and then we're going to run our um, ribbon through that to draw a string. So that's the back side of the bag. And now the front side, I need to sew this channel on and we're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to zip this down really fast. Get that first pin out of there because she's not even. And let's see. Just gonna run this down. This will be a great sew along if you wanna, you know, rewatch my video. Sew along with me, have to get your pieces ready. This is great, it's really simple. So I sewed down close to the edge and that's gonna hold on my channel for me. And now, with the channels folded down on my fabric, um, I'm going to lay them right sides together. So the channels are tucked inside. Um, you don't want them sticking out. And I'm going to, and I'm gonna close this bag up. So I am going to put right sides together and I'm gonna do just like the liner. I'm going to sew it all the way around, down one side, across the bottom, and then back up the other side. You're leaving the top open. And let's see. I, and I don't want my channels in the way, so make sure you sew a quarter of an inch. I'm not pinning this, so I'm, I'm winging it and hoping I can keep everything together. I don't want to take up too much of your time. So you can get sewing and make your own. Okay, and then I'm gonna turn it so my needle stays down, making sure everything is lined up. And then I'm just gonna go across the bottom. And then I'm gonna pivot and I'm gonna come back up the side. channels don't fall in that my seam which they don't so if you sew a quarter of an inch they'll stay out of there out of the way and I can do a little back stitch here but we're still going to sew the liner in because when we sew the liner in you're going to leave a little hole it works out gloriously so now you can see that I've got the outside of the bag um, stitched around and now we're going to take this out the bag, the outside of the bag. I'm trying to make sense here. We're going to turn it right side out. Um, before I do that, though, I do want to cut off these little corners here. You know, when you sew a corner, you want to get rid of that bulk. So I'm just going to snip them corners off this, the outside of the bag and the inside piece. Um, they got a pair of scissors. Yep, here. And I'm going to just, um, 
don't cut your threads just clip off that corner so when you fold this out it will lay nice and nice and neat and you won't have your corners looking like they're rolled in and let's see oh i ran out of bobbin on this one so i need to finish sewing up the seam on the one side <laughs> oh i'm a great teacher ain't i jeez <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of good teachers out there. I'm just sharing my ideas with you and um, hoping you can make something great. I am a passionate sewer. I love to do this and it's fun to share. So um, let me just get this. Um, I'm just going to over sew a little bit where I'd stopped. And let me just do a little back tack. And then finish so oops forward forward gear you're not giving it to me okay and then just finish up to the top do a little back tack make sure I push the button and cut all right so we have the outside and the inside of the bag ready and I just want to get off these few little pieces of thread here that hang out. I'm not a fan of the threads hanging around when you cut, so I just want to get those off there. So now I'm going to turn my bag so it is, um, let me get you here so you can see. I'm going to um, turn the outside of my bag right side out. So pretty simple. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I can try to poke out my corners. I do have a little poker tool here. I have a little wooden, little wooden dowel here. I'm just gonna kind of poke my corners out and make sure my iron's hot because you might want to press this too. Just so everything lays nice, nice and neat. Neat little bag. And let me get this one. Just kind of poke out the corners so that they're not looking like a half square triangle in there. Okay, so there is the outside of my bag. That's the back side. This is the front side. And after I get this sewed, we will have the little channels on top and we'll thread some ribbon in there. So now... that I'm doing this right yes the inside of the bag if I can get my finger in there it lies so flat okay I'm going to take the outside of my bag because we want right sides together so the outside has the right sides together I'm going to take the outside of my bag and I'm going to put it to the inside of my bag so when we put this together the right sides will be facing or touching each other. So you want right sides together. So the inside of your bag, the, the right side is out, and the inside of the bag, the right side is in. That makes sense. <laughs> and I'm going to um, put these together. So um, let me get these tucked in. And I want to line up and make sure your channels are tucked in as well because we do, we do not want them sticking out. You want them folded in. And very important to um, line up your seam. Your, your outside of your bag seam lines up with the inside of the bag seam. You want them seams to be together. Um, otherwise, you're gonna, your channels are gonna get in the way and we don't want the channels being sewed. So, um, both seams on each side need to line up and I would stick a pin in them. So I am trying to get mine lined up. As you can see, hopefully, <laughs> in my lighting, I'm going to put a pin right in them seams so that they stay together. And hopefully I don't poke myself. Yep, I got through both seams. So I'm just gonna pin those together. 
So that 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 side is <laughs> pinned together. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing, you know. I mean, I don't make things easy because I'm, you know, I'm struggling here a little bit. But this is my life, so. Okay, I got those lined up. Get me a little pin. I can kind of stick it in there. And I got it through both seams, but it's not poking through where I want it to. So I want to get right in the crease of each seam to get my point of my needle to fall in there so I know that they line up perfectly. Okay, so each side is pinned. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way around to the inside of my bag, but I'm going to leave a hole like on one side of the flat side here. And I'm gonna put two pins there so I know not to sew past. So I'm gonna start at one pin where I put it in. And let me just, let me do this over here so um, I don't scratch my table. But I will show you what I got done here. I'm going to put a pin where I want, on each side where I want to leave my hole. So I'm just gonna, and I'm gonna leave that hole probably about three inches. Three to three and a half, you don't have to measure it, just enough where I can pull my bag through that hole. So now you can see I have two pins, one here and one here, and I'm not gonna sew right here. I'm gonna leave that open so we can um, turn the bag right side out. And you're not gonna see any of these seams or stitches. And so now I wanna make sure everything lines up. I'm gonna align my edges. I don't want them to overlap, overhang each other. I want them to be perfectly even all the way around. So, and you can pin this, but I don't wanna confuse myself with my pins. I usually just um, stick it under here and I can do this. So I'm going to uh, get you back over here. So you can kind of see, hopefully, that I'm going to sew this all the way around. And I'm going to do it at a quarter of an inch. And my quarter of an inch um, needle where I'm sewing should fall past. You'll see the stitches where you put your channel in. So your stitches will be past that channel. So your channel is almost like it's going to get double stitched. So I'm going to take a stitch or two. I'm going to back stitch just to lock. And then I'm going to um, stitch it all the way around. And I don't want to stitch over my pins. Please don't sti stitch over your pins because um, it could cause needle breakage. And that's not ever good. That's a scary sound. So I'm coming up to that first seam. I want everything to line up together. Keep my quarter of an inch, and I, I'm getting a little out of, yeah, I want to keep my edges even, so I try to have to manipulate a little bit just to keep everything nice and even, and you have to turn your bag a little bit and just kind of roll it around so you can follow. Now I should have started where my one pin was and I didn't because I'm babbling. <laughs> so I'm gonna sew to that first pin and where I was gonna leave my hole and I'm gonna back stitch. Just to lock it because I don't want them stitches to come out when I um, turn my bag. So now I'm gonna cut my thread there and then I'm gonna go where this next pin is because I know that's where I wanna leave the other end of my hole. Oh, I'm getting kind of close there. So I want to uh, do a couple stitches, a couple back stitches to lock it. And then oops, that button doesn't like to push. I'm going to sew all the way up to where I first began, which is all the way over here. <laughs> so I'm coming across that second seam and I want to make sure that they stay in line which they are, sew over that, and then roll this a little bit more so I can get to where I first started with my red thread. And now I'm almost back 
to where I started. I'm gonna over sew a little bit and then just back sew, back stitch, turn that off and cut my thread. All right, now, so now I have the liner of my bag sewed to the, to the outside. And I'm gonna clip that little threads there because I don't like excess threads hanging around that don't need to be there. And now I'm going to find that little hole. Oh, there's another pin. We don't want that in there. And there's another thread. I want to just trim that so it doesn't get in the way. So all them little extra threads that are sticking up and sticking out. There's a couple more. I don't want to get them off. All right. Now. I can get that little hole, that little three inch hole that I made. I'm going to um, get in the bottom here and I'm going to um, push my bag, all of it, through that hole. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm kind of taking my thumb and I'm pushing the fabric through that hole so it all, it's all gonna come out right side, right side out. So you can see the right side of my the right side of my bag liner, and then the right side of my bag. And now what you, we will do is we'll take our liner. I got some threads here hanging around. I'm not sure, that one's attached. We'll have to cut those, that one's not. And we're gonna tuck our liner into our bag. And I really like how I do it with this the hole at the top is because you have that channel on there and I'm gonna show you an easy way to cover that up and, um, and, and close it. So we're gonna tuck the liner down into the bag. You know, this bag would make great gift bags too. You know, if you had a gift or something, and like I said, you could box the bottom and you could put the channels in it and you can put your ribbon through it and you can make a little drawstring bag, you know, and you can make little storage bags, whatever. Um, I like this channel liner because it is just um, easy to do. And um, now what I wanna do is um, I want to, uh, oops, I want to get my uh, channel pulled up because I want to kind of press this and I want everything to come up and meet. So I'm just trying to even everything out. Now you're going to have this little hole inside of your liner, but when you have that quarter of an inch, that um, quarter of an inch should fold down and lay nicely. And what I'm going to do is press it. And usually I take like some fabric glue and I just glue that little hole down and it's perfect. Um, if you want, you can top stitch all the way around the top of your bag to close that hole up. But for these little game pieces, I just got some liquid stitch and I just throw it, you know, into the seam and I just liquid stitch it down and then I run my channels through it. It's all on how you want to do it. It's a preference thing. But um, you can see this is a really cute bag. Let me get these threads. Threads drive me crazy. It seems like there's a lot of them and they just poke out from everywhere. And I guess they were just some loose ones. So I've got the, the channel pieces all pulled up and I'm gonna kind of show that to you. you it kind of blends in with the back because it's the same color, but the front, you can see how it makes a nice little contrast on the front. And um, like I said, these, are, these would make really great gift bags as well as a storage bag for your game pieces. I mean, you can really get creative with this. It's, it's really super simple. So I'm gonna take you over here on the ironing board. I love that everything is right here and I can kind of show you on how I do things. But um, like I said, my, my workstation here is still a work in progress, but I'm, I'm already loving it. So it just makes things so much easier that everything is right here in one central area. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to um, fold over that where it's where stitched inside, if I can kind of show you. The, this little piece here where it's open should just fold over enough. And what I'm going to do is just fold it over and I'm going to press it with my iron because I want it to lay down nice and flat and I really want to keep this nice and neat. And if I want to glue that, you know, 
it's not real hot yet, but I'm going to show you how it's kind of creased that little fold down right there. I wish I could show you this better. Bear with me. <laughs> there is a fold here. Mm, I don't know. So you can kind of see this little fold and I'm kind of pressing it down so it'll fold in. And then if you put a little bead of glue, you know, like liquid stitch or fabric glue, you could glue that down and then just press it right to the bag and it would it would just make that seam like there's no seam there at all and you wouldn't even have to stitch it. But you can stitch it if you want to, you know, I mean, that's that's up to you. It's your bag. You know, if you think it'd be more durable, you know, if it's gonna get a lot of use, you can stitch it. But for me, this is just a little bag and I'm just gonna put my game pieces in it. And I just want everything to lay down nice and flat. So I'm just gonna kind of check inside and make sure everything fits together. And just kind of press it out. It's just super cute. So I don't have any, um, I don't have any ribbon out to um, show you how I thread this. I could grab some. I have ribbon in, in a basket in my closet. I keep lots of ribbon and I buy it on sale because um, I can get it, you know, sale prices. Hobby Lobby usually has like a sale where they you can get it ribbon half off and have lots of cute stuff so I buy it I buy a lot of it like a lot so I like ribbons in every different color because you could put a gold ribbon a red ribbon a blue ribbon a cream ribbon a dark blue so I think I'm going to find a piece of ribbon to um string through my channels and your ribbon um I'm going to explain this because I don't know if any of you are like me I didn't know how to do my ribbon for a long time I remember years ago making drawstring bags and I couldn't figure out how to when you pull on the strings they sh it should just automatically cinch close and I would just I didn't know how to do it but I learned <laughs> so anyway when you string your ribbon through this um I usually put a safety pin on the end and I will feed it through one side through the, the first channel and then feed it back through the second channel. So two ends will come out on this side and then you will tie them. The second ribbon, because you're gonna need two pieces and there, I'm gonna guess, I mean, you're gonna have to thread one through and see how long you, you, you like it. I like where well, there's probably, a, you know, maybe three inches of overhang on each side. So you'll have to measure your ribbon, but if you feed it through one channel and then feed it back through the, the bottom channel until both ends, you know, you have one end coming out the top and one end coming out the bottom and you're going to tie it in a knot. The second piece of ribbon, you're going to string it through the left side and feed it through to the end and then thread it back through the bottom channel so that the end comes out on this side. So you'll have two ends of the second ribbon on this side and you'll tie it in a knot. So that way when you pull both of your strings, um, it will, it will cinch your bag close. So it's really fun. And um, these are the ones that I got stitched. You can see these are really nice. And um, these squares, like I said, if you have a hexi maker, you can make these in hexes. You can make them in circles, whatever you desire. You can make triangles. I mean, it's all up to you, but, but doing this and keeping them in squares, I think is really simple using a contrasting thread. And you can see that my pieces will fit nicely into my bag and you can just kind of, you know, lay them in there and, um, once I get my drawstring through my channels, you can just cinch this close and, and store it. It's really a great little, a great little bag. So, um, sorry, I don't have the ribbon handy right here, but I'm not going to make you wait any longer because this has turned out to be quite a video and I don't want to take up too much of your time, but thanks for joining me in my new little creative area here. And, um, thank you for watching this, um, tutorial on this, um, match game memory game this has been a memorable day and if you like this video please like please subscribe please leave me a great little comment if you enjoyed um i really think this is a fun thing to do and your kids will love it so please stay tuned to my channel because i do have an upcoming valentine uh project i would love to share with you i already made a sample and it's awesome so subscribe to my channel stay tuned and i will chat at you later have a great day Thank you.